In my quest to leave a mark on the culture and make hip hop proud, I'd like to welcome you all to another episode of The Essence, presented by Tent TV and powered by Validated Radio and Live 89 FM. I am your host, KB Tindall. Today I have Kaya Baby in the building. Um, this is a Queens representative, man. Um, mm -hmm. Southside Jamaica, Queens. Um, you know, you get a lot of love for that. I'm, I'm originally from Hollis, Queens. Okay. Um, um, out based out in Cali now. You know what I mean? But um, but yeah, man, I know coming up in Southside, like you got a lot of legends that come out of that landscape over there. You know what I mean? Right. Um, you know, um, from 50 to Onyx to Lost Boys. Um, what do you feel like your your responsibility is to Queens following up behind a lot of those legends? Um I don't know, I could just be, just do my thing. Feel me, just be me and keep doing me how I've been doing. And the people actually me actually label me like, you know, the greatest side of Queens or the next side of Queens. So as long as I keep going how I've been going, I know I'm just gonna make Queens proud like I've been doing. That's the best I could do, just keep being me. That's the, those are tough acts to follow. So I don't want to say necessarily say I'm following them. I'm just gonna create my own lane and just be another staple, another legend coming out of Queens. Definitely, definitely. I, I could definitely respect that. Um, mm -hmm. where did you get your name from? Where did the name Kaya Baby come from? Um, it's from my name. That's from my name. So it's actually just a nickname. So okay, gotcha. <laughs> that's gotcha. from my actual yeah. All right. Um, I actually saw you on an episode of um Young TV Maps uh raps with um Ralph McDaniel. Yeah, Atlanta. I was on your side. I was at Hollis. So yeah, on exactly. Side. I saw you on two fifth. Yeah, yeah, definitely, definitely. I was and, on your um, side. Yeah. Um. You know, it, on there, you know, it talked about you being inspired by Missy and Left Eye and Aaliyah. Mm -hmm. um, and, and I read your bio, you know, you, you got some inspiration from Eminem. What what about those artists individually inspired you? Um, when I mentioned them, um, those specific females, it was just their creativity. Mm -hmm. um, just being them, like I said, it's like Missy and Left Eye was always themselves. It was never... Um, Missy lost weight clearly for health reasons, obviously, you know, being too big is unhealthy, but she never was like, I'm going to stop. I'm going to be slim so I could be accepted into the hip hop culture. Like Missy was just always Missy. She always made her own thing. The finger waves, the outfits, the big, the big, big, big outfits, like just her own swag. Even just the singing, like I talk about to the day, like, yo, Missy really had a saying, it's your shit from the flat nam in the club. Like <laughs> she really <laughs> had a saying, wow, stuff. And there's not a lot of artists, especially female artists, that can do that. It's a lot of pressure when you're a female. They be like, oh, she she can't rap. Oh, she don't got balls. But when it's men, you can have 100 boys come out and make silly songs or do whatever they do, and we dance to it. So right. I appreciate people like Missy and Left Out for being able to do such and get in the past, but still being lyrical. They definitely did have their conscious records and their lyrical tracks. But for the most part, I really like, um, you know, just the individuality, creativity, um things like that as far as eminem i think that's when i first started like rap trying to rap okay. um i loved eminem's wordplay and storytelling and um just him being an underdog i like underdogs so <laughs> yeah, <laughs> his story definitely. his storytelling and his work playing words is crazy i'm like nah this guy's nuts he really makes right. you sit there and picture the things he's saying in yeah. his music <laughs> you got a favorite song by Eminem that you like um What's the name of that one? I forgot the name of it. Oh, he started when I was just a little baby boy. My mama used to tell me these crazy <laughs> things. That was my, that's my favorite joint. He went off on that track. Yeah. <laughs> um, I haven't listened to him in a minute, though. I'm not even going to say he a lie. I haven't listened to like his, like the relapse. And uh, I haven't listened to, I got to catch up. Got a lot of right. catching up with him to do. Right. You rocking you rock with early M. Early M. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's what's up. That's what's up. Um, I know you dropped the, the single Love Story back in February and, and, and now you're getting ready to drop a new mixtape. Um, P.S. New is project, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, tell us about the project, um, if there's any features on it, what producers you used and what, what was the mindset going into making the project? Uh, as far as producers, I got a beat by uh, this producer called that kid Frankie. He collabed on it with a, another big producer named Nick Mirror. I just discovered. Mm -hmm. Um He's a Grammy Award winning, winning producer. And then uh, Dizzy Banco, he does a lot of tracks that we hear now on the radio every freaking day. Uh, those are probably like the two, is, two biggest producers on there. But I have other producers I worked with for my last project, Showtime, uh, Jada Averton, uh, HGF1. He's one new 
producer um, I worked with. The song is phenomenal. It's actually one of the top tracks that everybody keeps picking on my project. Okay. Um, and Charisma, the one who actually did Love Story, she got about three tracks on there. Uh, Money Montage, he's also another Grammy-nominated um, producer, so I have tracks on there from him as well. Um, no features. I believe Charisma probably sung on slightly on one of my hooks. Okay. There's no features. That's dope, though. Yeah, it's all, it's all me. Features coming yeah. soon. Features coming soon. No doubt. That's what it is. That's what it is. Now, when you do when you do a project and it's all you, you know, it, it puts the weight on your shoulders. You know what I mean? So it gives yeah. you the opportunity to shine shine your best mm -hmm. and not not put anybody in the way of that light for you. You know what I mean? So that's not put anybody to shame. Yeah. <laughs> that's people say. That's true too. That's true too. <laughs> that's true too. <laughs> Definitely. Um Speaking about shame, like, like, cause I, I first got, I first caught wind of you. I'm not even gonna hold you. I, I caught wind of you, um, from Funk, Ma from Funk Master Flex. You know okay. what I mean? And when I heard you freestyle, I'm like, yo, Shorty got bars like, like crazy. Like, I mean, it's not that there's not women out there without bars, but then right. I find out that you kind of like don't write down lyrics either. Is that? Mm -hmm. is that I, the case? I just started to like during the quarantine. I just started probably to write in my phone and stuff because I okay. started having a lot of like sessions with other people or this time session i'm usually just being in my own studio and just recording on the mic like just playing to be in this recording right right and right. now time sessions and getting back to work outside openings oh got a session two to four so i'm like oh, i gotta come prepare i'm not gonna be saying i'm wasting time like okay. freaking on it you. out yeah i got mm -hmm. you now now when you when you decided not to write you know w when you're spitting was that something that you did based because you heard hope did that or was, or was that just something that you just did for yourself and it just came naturally to you that's something i did for myself for my memory um when i first started rapping after team light work i was rapping with this dude ox mm -hmm. and he actually the one who began to mold me as an artist i was just rap like when i first started rapping i was just rapping and i was just that i didn't want to be a big superstar rapper like i just could rap but with people telling me like now nah, you're actually nice like you live cool you just got to figure out your flow Right. That's when I started learning about hooks, cadence, delivery, ad libs, uh, if, even saying certain things with emotion. Like certain times I used to rap, but like you rap it like you're reading it. So mm. that's what made me stop even writing. I would just think of my verse and go spit it because you, you'll hear the difference. I can hear the difference in myself as an artist as opposed to me reading something, I wrote and spitting it, and me going in, like just vibing out, going, but I got it. Let me go spit my verse. And then spit the verse comes out totally. You can feel it, like you can hear the difference, and it's it's good for my memory. So it's something I did for myself. I was not. I'm not trying to be like whole. Yeah, okay, <laughs> I'm not trying you. to be like whole. I got you. I got you. <laughs> um, you know, I also heard that you know you 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 grew up and you listened to a lot of R and B music, and that's that's something that a lot of hip hop artists do. You find that some of the great ones don't even really listen to a lot of hip hop. Yeah. They listen to a lot of soul music and R and B and stuff like that. But what was your what was your earliest memory of hip hop culture? Maybe DMX, I'll have to say mm. um, the bloody poster. Like my aunt just had the bloody poster and I was so infatuated with it. I was like, who is this man with blood all over him right, in right. the tub? I think that's when I found out about like pig blood. Oh, it's fake. It's acting. Uh, uh. But I was just so intrigued by it. And then I started listening, sneaking and listening to DMX. Okay. I was like, he's, he's, saying, he's saying some stuff. But that's, then uh, after that, that kind of takes me. That let me just interrupt you real quick. That kind of takes me to my next my next question because recently we lost DMX, we lost Shock G, we lost Black right. Rob. Um, so as you continue with your answer, tell me about any how any of those artists influenced you and what kind of mark they left on you. Um, I just love DMX nonchalant. I don't give a f attitude. Like he always made it clear in his music and his interviews. Like I have the talent. Y'all want me? I don't need this gold chain cars, paying my money for my records and we can go about our business. I don't need to pop bottles in the club. But like he would say all the time, like, yo, people go celebrate one award at the club and I'll go to a little pool over like five of my friends. I don't want to be. And I'm the same exact way. I really don't like the big crowds and parties lavish every night, every night. I'm, I don't, I'm not mm -hmm. really into that. Um, but just as a kid and listening to his music and other rappers, he really did have a message compared to a lot of rappers that I was listening to when I did start listening to rap. It was, you know, it was fresh, fresh music, really. When you're young, you listen to what's on the radio. And then back then, it wasn't really no SoundCloud and right. things were just...
just MySpace name and stuff. It wasn't no Instagram, I think just started. It wasn't teaser and access to Spotify and Tidal. We didn't have access to all the music that we had like that back then. Right, so right. I was hearing, it was hard to find like conscious rappers that was really even had a message. You know what I'm saying? I wasn't too detrimental to the culture. It's all about drugs, sex, money, or whatever. Right, right. But um, yeah, I had, I had to do my homework definitely. Once I started rapping, I, I had to dig in the crates for sure. No doubt, no doubt. Yeah, definitely. yeah. Well, a bunch of artists, the Hoves, Nas, Big, yeah. female artists, even way back. Like I definitely had to get in my crates, the big L's. And there's <laughs> no a bunch doubt. of artists I never even heard of from Queens. I was like, wow, okay, put yeah. me to shame. Yeah, yeah, that shit does, that definitely does happen. But yeah, I mean, if you want to be, you know, if you want to, if you want to hold court. With the greats, you gotta you gotta study the greats, right? You know I mean? Definitely, right. definitely. Um, tell me one thing that you love, and one bad thing that you would like to see change about your hood growing up. Um, that I love. It's hard to put it in one word. I guess I guess there's no place like home. You know that that saying goes. It's, right. I just love. Um. What I can say is like a, it takes a village. Like there, there are people here that you still to the day you walk by, you see taking care of the garden in front of the building mm-hmm. or just like put patrol in certain kids. Like, hey, cut that out. Um, but that goes to what I don't like is the lack of monitoring or the lack of care, mm-hmm. I could, should say, for what kids is really doing outside. Like yeah, we keep an eye on them, but you're not really sitting there and listening to what they're saying, what they're talking about, what they're doing. Right, right. They're telling you they're going to the store, but what they're doing in the midst of going to the store and coming back mm-hmm. from the store, like I could, I wasn't doing that. Like I wasn't mm-hmm. doing that until a certain age, maybe in my teens. I wasn't like a kid by right. myself, no guidance. And I see that a lot, unfortunately. I, I would honestly like to see more community involvement block parties you can't even have those no more without the cops giving us a problem yeah. really successfully mm-hmm. this kid's outside playing naturally with the freaking phones like you can say yeah. um but yeah I, I don't know it's not it's not that bad anymore i can say that it's not bad people have been getting back they have the pantries they've been giving out food um mm-hmm. you know holding job fairs and definitely it's definitely been a big change yeah. um but it definitely can be an improvement still absolutely absolutely um who who do you look to for inspiration business wise? Uh, I might Rick Ross, because mm-hmm. if you notice, he doesn't have a roster of artists that haven't really done well, right? Under him, and then also he branched off and ventured into so many different businesses that you yeah. really hear him make music. He has the biggest estate in Atlanta, yeah. so that should yeah. tell you something, <laughs> like. Yeah. Absolutely. That should really tell you something. Like this man barely drops projects ever yeah. recently, and he's just out here. Like he just dropped the new color of flavor champagne. So mm-hmm. definitely Rick Ross. Um, definitely Jay Z. Like just everything he's been doing over the past couple of years, as far as even bill reforms and getting involved with the political aspect and stuff like that. Those, those right. two, I can say, they've been doing it right. Definitely. Nas definitely. too, especially being from Queens, even when he had his blades, the the, the cuts. I've been peeped that when he dropped the, mm-hmm. the line with the uh, little haircut joint joints. The yeah, clippers. with the bevel, yeah. the bevel, the bevel. Hennessy, yeah, those yeah. those are big moves. Yeah. They just, yeah. I guess, not swept under the rug, but weren't congratulated as much as they should have been. Right, right. And then he got, he got the cryptocurrency thing going on, so yeah. He's moving um, quiet. He's getting quiet money, but he but he's stacking. Yeah, and definitely <laughs> Nipsey, God rest his soul. That was like amazing yeah. what he was trying to do. That's something I definitely aspire to do as well. So, yeah. Absolutely. Um, As an artist and as a person, what 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 sacrifices have you made or what things have you had to go without because you invested in your artistry? Um, Being broke. Shoot. Being broke. (laughs) Um, Looking, (laughs) trying to find maybe an investor, loans like. That's what you got to do when you're independent. Right. You know I mean, you nothing to be ashamed of because realistically, Absolutely. that's what I tell other people. Like, yo, why you want to do X, Y, Z? You could try to get your own money. You could try to go to a bank yourself or go to find investors. Like, it's really people out here that's willing to invest. You just got to have the right mm-hmm. note to say, like, yo, this is what I'm doing. This is how I'm going to make your return. It might take one year, might take 10 years, but this is what, what it is. And they, they can either say yes or no. 
And like right. I say all the time, you're gonna hear a hundred no's, but you hear that one yes for sure. Yeah, one yes, that's right. Um, this year yeah. just gotta keep pushing. Just gotta mm-hmm. keep pushing. It's gonna work out for y'all. I, I had to sacrifice time. I can't spend all the time on my like. I just made it this past weekend to my family family reunion, but like I hear, okay. and they all like, "What do we have to do to get you out here? Do we have to pay you?" <laughs> I'm like, bro, it's not it had nothing to do with that. Yeah. I'm gearing up for this project. As you can see, I'm doing an interview with you right now. You're so working. we just you, yeah. yeah, the interview just kept piling up back to back. So I'm like, I don't know. That's why I picked June for the family reunion because I know my project was, you know, I'm gearing up for my project. Right. Um, right. but yeah, I made it, thank God. But just things like that. It's a lot of things I do miss, like family events, birthdays, or even, for example, my aunt wants to celebrate her 40th, like in a bunch of families flying in for that. But mm-hmm. I got booked literally the same day out of town already from like last month. I've been booked for this gig right, already. Right. So that's something like things like that. I sacrifice not not being able to kick it regularly how I want to or just even yeah. going out casually because now I'm getting more known. I know a fan that might want to take a picture or might want to talk. But there's some people that don't know how to show love without turning it into harassment. Mm. <laughs> so that's <laughs> those are things I definitely got to deal with. Say that. But, um, yeah. 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 All of this, this takes a lot of patience. You really got to want it because you're not going to have it all the time. You're not mm-hmm. going to have the clothes you might want for a certain video. The look you might want is you got to mm-hmm. get the knockoff version or whatever the look you're going for, whatever, follow the while. Feel me? So you could afford to do what you want to do. But those is a lot of sacrifices. Right. Time wise, patience wise, mm-hmm. mentally, like it takes a toll on you mentally. Yeah. Uh, someone like me, I know a lot of people like me would have quit by now. Like, yo, I did all of this. I, 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 I don't got a blue check. I don't even have 100,000 followers. I don't. Mm-hmm. But I know what's going on. Like, right. But I'm you not... got discipline, too, though, because you come right. from the world of sports. You know what right. I mean? As a ball player, you got to have extreme discipline to Absolutely. play at a high level. So coming into the rap game, what was that What was that transition like for you? I can imagine that it, it couldn't have been too hard for you, but but there is still like a learning curve that you got to go through. Um, It wasn't, it wasn't too hard. I can't say like I wasn't cocky in the beginning. I definitely was. I'm like, I'm just starting. I'm better than half these people or females, I guess, in the beginning. Because when you're a female and you start rapping with dudes, that's the first thing they do, put you against another right. female. Like that's the first automatic thing they do. So I definitely was out here like, yeah, I'm better than most females. But I, I, when I started to get into the, business is when I, it was a difference. That's what's mm-hmm. hard. It's not, the rapping is not hard. It's the politics. Right. And, and right. this business, unfortunately, what the consumer don't see, for the artist, is 90% politic and 10% music. Mm, exactly. For y'all, it's 100% music. Y'all don't give a damn about right. our business. Even when things are going wrong in our life and you see it on the shade roof, it, mm-hmm. that goes to the same, my life, your yeah, entertainment. It's entertainment to the consumer. It's not, they don't care. Like Yeah, they don't. Yep, they don't look at it the way the way that we do from an inside. They don't. Yeah, they don't know half the things artists have to yeah. mix and master and up. They don't know what the hell that is. Like. Yeah, <laughs> all they hear is the final product and they see right. the final vision. You know what I right. mean? So yeah, that's crazy. Yeah, definitely. Um, as a hip hop artist, what do you feel your responsibility is to hip hop culture as a whole? Um, definitely the. Keeping the 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 hip hop, I guess, and rap alive, um, you know, as best as I can. Because, like I said, I'm I'm an artist. I did grow up mostly on R and B, and I do have the ability to rap. So I'm always gonna make music. Mm-hmm. I'm not just gonna make boom bap hip hop rap. Right. That's not what I do. That's not the only thing I listen to. So I'm not gonna turn around and just give y'all that. But I'm right. definitely gonna um always try to just incorporate positivity in hip hop. Like it's not always about gun violence and drugs and sex right. and money and there's so much other things like I'm so mad Macklemore made that song that I'm gonna pop my tag like I wish I made that song right like <laughs> even though the hook is singy is like he's still rapping and he's saying every yeah. day more people can relate to that song than a, a, a little baby song like y'all know right. damn well y'all don't have no little baby money y'all not popping nobody y'all got those cars but it just make you feel good yep. but that other song the thrift shop song is still is a fun song and it's relatable mm-hmm. and it's real yeah. But when you make songs like that, it's hard, but it's not impossible. Right. I got you. I mean, and a lot of people, they try to criticize Mac Lamar or whatever, or say he's culture appropriating or whatever you want to say about him. But at the end of the day, the dude can rhyme and the dude stays in the pocket. You know what I mean? Right. And he gives you something that, that normal people can feel. You know what I mean? Right. And that's what normal people want to do a lot of the times. A lot of times, normal people don't want to emulate what an artist do. They just want to feel like they're a part of. 
You know what I mean? Right, right. So if, you, if you give them that, they they're gonna you, you get a fan for life when it comes to that. Mm -hmm. You know, absolutely, mm -hmm. absolutely. Um, during the pandemic, what's what's one thing that you learned about yourself? Um. I think I just became a little more anxious towards the end of the pandemic for okay. it to end because like being stripped of not being able to perform is like, how can I put it? It's like if you're a doctor and you really do love performing surgeries, but then mm -hmm. all, for a whole year, all your meetings are on Zoom and you're telling someone else what to do. Pick right. up that utensil right there and be, and be like, I don't even want to do this no more. So I started to become, I guess, discouraged, I guess mm -hmm. you could say. Mm -hmm. um, I didn't really learn anything new about myself. I just picked up or created better habits to keep myself okay. positive and keep myself going on a positive path, I guess you could say. And it's trying different things that I usually wouldn't do or have the time to do on a normal day. Right, right. I mean, I can imagine for you, it's probably like for me, like I'm like I'm more of an introvert. Like I don't necessarily need to be out in a big crowd and, and all of that. So it didn't really drive right. me crazy to be home. You know what I'm saying? It didn't. It didn't. Really yeah, drive no, me it didn't crazy drive me crazy to be, to be home, but just not yeah. even to perform. Like, damn, I can't even perform. Yeah, but fucking imagine. And I'm yeah, blessed to have my yeah. own recording studio, but it was still it was some studios that weren't even open. So I could imagine how other artists like, damn, I can't even record. Right. right. Like, I got to try to find a spot low key. It's gonna mm -hmm. let me record here or there. But yeah, I, def I definitely probably realized I'm out of, more out of shape than I realized. Like, <laughs> that's probably one thing I did realize. Like, wow, I'm slim, but I'm really out of shape. <laughs> <laughs> that's something more you got to get that on your bucket yeah. list. Get that right. Yeah, I was like, oh, no, I'm out of shape. Don't let this skinniness fool you. <laughs> um, so your first mixtape, The Rough Draft, dropped in 2011. Um, mm -hmm. So you've been in the game a decade or more, you know, considering mm -hmm. that you was rhyming before that first project even came out. Um, how do you feel you've grown as an all around artist since you've come into the game? Um, I've definitely gained more patience and definitely gained more of understanding this to the business of music overall. Like it is what it is. Like you said, I've been doing this for 10 years. I feel like, you know, you know, that great saying everybody thinks. Your success is overnight, but it comes mm -hmm. from 10 years, comes from 10,000 hours. I mm -hmm. read the book, uh, Collier's, and it discusses 10,000 hours and how we assume that LeBron James and even down to Einstein, all of them were just so great because they're so great when in all actuality they had the um, advantages to make 10,000 hour, hours before the average person. So right. um, I feel like now I put my 10,000 hours in for sure. Mm -hmm. Um I've just grown as far as song making, like constructing songs. Uh, I can record myself. I could loop beats, fly the beats, and loop the hook. I don't really don't need an engineer besides the mix. Right, right. Um, uh, that, I just definitely grew like better songs for sure. Like okay. constructing songs and putting projects together. Uh, definitely, I've, I've grown into my look. I figured out a look that I'm I'm good with. Mm -hmm. Um. And definitely, like I said, is my patience. My patience okay. and discipline has grown as an artist. Um, just be doing what I have to do, not out here. Before I used to complain, I really used to sometimes argue with people in my comments, or mm -hmm. I'd be like, "You get the f of my page if you don't like that." Like, <laughs> now I'd be like, "Block yeah. or delete." Sometimes I'm blocking, just keep delete, it going. Or block. Yeah, yeah. Just, just keep moving. Yeah, yeah. Right. So <laughs> definitely grown, matured. I yeah. could say as an artist over the yeah. over the past years. That's what's up. That's what's up. Ain't no social. You know how social media is. There's always somebody behind the keyboard always. that ain't doing shit that, that want to talk about what you're doing. Right. You know what I'm saying? Oh. When you first start, you be like, what? You know how I am. And now it's like, <laughs> yeah. please. I've, been, I've done so much. You're of one opinion. I'm actually laughing at you because you exactly. want my attention. That's all you had to say. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I tell I answer people positive comments all the time. Now I'll answer a positive comment before anything. Now I just erase the negativity right, automatically. Right. There you go. That's that's what it is, definitely. Um, what does hip hop mean to you? Uh, hip hop is hip hop music is life, honestly. Hip hop, I can't just say hip hop, I'll have to say music. Okay, it's, it's, it's life to me. Like I randomly make up songs throughout the day and just hum in. So everybody is universal, it's a universal language, like. If I don't blow here, I could be a superstar overseas. I know several artists who are mm -hmm. huge superstars that are from here that overseas. They love hip hop. They love rap. They love the type of music that I put out or whatever. Right, right. Um, 
Yeah, so I, that's that's really the same. Music, music is life. Like when we in a bad mood, we put on music sometimes to make um to agree with us, to have someone mm-hmm. agree with us, or to be in a better mood. <laughs> yeah. But working yeah. out, put on music to give you more um pump you up. Same with cleaning yeah. the house, put on music to make you feel good about cleaning the house. Music is universal. You music is love. Like definitely, hip hop and music is life. Definitely, that's what's up. Um, last question. Tell me about any other ventures that you're currently working on. Uh, merch. Are you doing some kind of acting? Um, anything that you got coming up that we should be checking for? Um, yeah, definitely. Uh, PS Not About You is dropping June 15th, so look out for that. I'll have some merch go along with that. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm working on a project. I've been posting on my story, so y'all see what Naima Supreme is working on a, a, a collab project. Okay. Um, definitely, yeah, films. I'm in 40 year old version on Netflix, so y'all could go check that out. Okay. Make sure you watch right. it all the way to the end. Not virgin, virgin. V- no, virgin, uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. The black Some and white, the black the and white joint. Like, oh, snap, yeah. Yeah, the black and white joint. Yeah, um, okay. I'm in yeah. two films on Amazon, The Cabin and Sisters Keep. Actually, The Cabin is a short film. Sisters Keep is a 10-episode uh, series. Okay. Um, That did amazing. We actually got picked up for another season. Um, yeah. I'm in a film called Better Than My Last. I believe it's dropping in June, hopefully. I don't working, ever know when he's dropping. Working. I don't even know when 40 old version was dropping and it just came out. Like, oh, snap, <laughs> I'm in that. Um, um, what else I got dropping? I got, a, I got so many films I'm in like right now working. I'll be forgetting the names of them. <laughs> you know, up. production. That's a Hollywood is another thing. That's another yeah. field for music. That's I another, don't be yeah. known. Yeah, the producer don't be known. They got to go through 100 people to find out when what's dropping, when mm-hmm. filming. But yeah, I got. Amazon, I'm on Amazon right now and Netflix, like I said. My previous project, as you mentioned, is still out for those who are new to me that want to get in tune. A rough draft is out. Mm-hmm. To whom it may concern, Sincerely Kaya. Right. Um, Sincerely Kaya, that's on all streaming platforms. And I believe the last two were only on SoundCloud. Okay. At that time, I wasn't yet yeah, too savvy with, I was just, you know, SoundCloud rapping, but. Right, right. That's what I got. Uh, my IG has everything on it, though. Kaya You're underscore working. baby, K Y A H. I have a link tree in my bio. It yep, has uh, everything on there. My that. Twitter, yeah, mm-hmm. Twitter, SoundCloud, Apple, Spotify, anything you're looking for, my YouTube is on there. The MTV joint you mentioned is on there. Well, um, my prior my prior freestyles, like you mentioned, the Flex joint, uh, the Think mm-hmm. joint, the BT verse, everything's on there. So That's what's up. That's what's one up. Click, you, you one click, you right there. You working, you working. I gotta, I gotta give you a hand clap. You thank you, working. thank you. Yes, you making, you making music look proud, and you making Queens look proud. You know what I mean? Thank you. <laughs> All right, Kaya, thank you for joining me on the Essence. I really appreciate you taking the time out. Much success to you. I'll definitely be tapped in on what you got coming up in the future. Yes, yeah, June fifteenth, please. Yes, sir. Tap in. All right. Thank you. All right, peace. Be safe.